So your choice is either to come to um, a cross leg position if that's comfortable for you, because we'll be here for a few moments, it might be nicer to take the legs wide because it's a little bit more balanced. We're also gonna lead straight into a seated mobilization using the, the legs crossed one way then the other way. So if you kind of don't wanna be sitting in lock cross legs for a long time, then sit with wide leg or leg straight forward and dandasana if you wish. So to begin, when we focus on the breath today, I'm going to suggest that we place the hands accordingly. So we're going to place the left hand. I know it looks right to you, but I want to do it right for the, you know, for, I want to feel the energy correctly. So left hand on to what I'm going to call the upper heart chakra. So there's space between the heart chakra and the throat chakra, which is kind of like in the sternum area. So we want to kind of open that area a little bit wider. Then we're going to take the right hand and place it on the belly. So you can't see my belly, it's a little bit lower down. So kind of underneath the rib cage. And then in this seated position, if you just align yourself, closing the eyes, feeling the top of the head parallel to the ceiling, the underside of the chin parallel to the floor, and then drawing the back of the head back until we feel that alignment back of the head lining up with the tailbone and that sense of lifting and lengthening equally out of the sit bones. So you want to kind of avoid any curvature, particularly in the upper spine, we tend to slump forward. So it might help you to draw the shoulder blades together. And as you come to each exhalation, get used to that sensation of drawing the tummy button towards the spine. So we often do this when we're lying in our back, but getting into this habit in an upright position is much more active, engaging the core and putting less pressure on those wide muscles of the back. Just check in with the position of the chin. You want to keep the underside of the chin parallel to the floor. Oftentimes when we close the eyes, we tip the nose up without even realizing and that tends to put a little pressure on the back of the neck. Now bring your awareness to the breath. Slowing the breath down. Deepening the inhalation. And lengthening the exhalation. And start to notice that simply this gesture of placing the palm on the upper heart chakra, on the navel chakra, you might start to notice a little warmth building in that connection between the hand and the heart, the hand and the abdomen. And the more you tune into the breath, inhaling deeply, exhaling fully, You'll start to feel your upper body expand and widen into the space that surrounds you. Then with every out breath, soften and release. We often practice deep yogic breath. So let's visualize now sending the breath to the belly with a deep inhalation. Then as you exhale, allowing the belly to soften and release. Inhaling deeply to the belly. Exhaling fully, feeling the belly soften and release. Another full deep inhalation to the belly. This time as you exhale here, visualize releasing any anxiety unclenching, releasing tension. Inhaling deeply to the belly, the chest and the collarbones. Exhaling fully from the collarbones, the chest and the belly last. So we feel the hands rise as we inhale. Then settle back to keep that connection on the exhale. A further deep breath in. 
Long breath out. Deep breath in. Full breath out. And as you come to this next exhalation, release your breath with an audible sigh. Now remove the hands from the heart, from the belly. Place the backs of the hands onto the thighs, palms turned up towards the ceiling. You can keep the eyes closed for comfort or you can soften the gaze down towards the floor. Then curl the index finger and thumb in towards one another to create a circle of energy here. Bringing your awareness back to the breath and taking a moment to scan the body from head to toe. Softening across the eyebrows, relaxing the jaw, resting the tongue in the well of the mouth. Releasing the shoulders down away from the ears. Working gently, slowly through the length of the spine almost as though you're breathing space between each individual vertebra. And noticing that with every exhalation, the sit bones release a little more deeply into the earth. You can let go of tension in and around the hips and the inner thighs. Focusing on that inhale to lift and lengthen that exhale to release any tension. Now, if you're wearing glasses, you might want to take a moment to just flip the glasses up on top of your head as we bring the hands together in front of the heart space. Taking a few moments here to rub the palms briskly together creating warmth in the palms. Then bringing those warm palms over the closed eyes, resting the fingertips in your hairline, feeling that gentle warmth across the eyes. Then gradually blinking the eyes open behind the palms, just starting to sense the light. And as you draw the fingertips down over the face, gradually becoming aware of the space that surrounds you. In no rush here, let's take our time to caress the face, to gently cup the jaw and to bring the hands back to an Anjali Mudra at heart center. Inhaling deeply, exhaling fully. Inhaling to create length through the body, lifting the arms overhead, coming into a lengthened cross-legged namaste. Take a bit further back. Exhaling to draw the tummy button in and bringing the hands back again towards the heart. Shrug the shoulders up towards the ears, then on an exhale, release and let the shoulders go. We're going to bring our attention now to the feet. If you were in wide leg, come into the first cross leg position. If you've been in cross leg, switch the cross over. So opposite foot comes in front or behind. Again, we'll take a moment just to rest the backs of the palms on the insides of the thighs. Realigning the back of the head with the tailbone, engaging the core. Inhaling to squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears. This time a little more control as you roll the shoulders back and down. So we're creating little circles here, opening through the collarbones, widening through the chest, activating those muscles under the shoulder blades. Roll the shoulders back and down, keeping the underside of the chin parallel to the floor. Gradually turn the nose over the right shoulder. Keep the chin parallel to the floor as you work all the way through to take the gaze over the left shoulder. 
then bring the gaze back to centre. On an exhale, gently lowering the chin towards the chest. So for a moment, we're allowing the weight of the head to release forward. You might feel a deeper stretch between the shoulder blades. Try to resist the temptation of curving the spine to accommodate this weight. Keep drawing the shoulder blades together. Draw the tummy button in. Then inhale, lift the gaze forward once more. Realign the back of the head with the tailbone. Again, that lovely length through the spine. Inhaling to extend both arms forward, bringing the palms together. Right forefinger over left, opening the hands towards the heart. Exhaling to draw the tummy button in, then curving through the spine, nodding the chin to the chest and widening the space across the middle back and the lower back. As you exhale, draw the tummy button in. As you inhale, lift back to center, turn the hands inside out, reach the arms up overhead, press through the palms, and soften the shoulders down away from the ears. Every out breath, engaging the core. Every in breath, creating length through the side of the body, comfortably resting the ears between the upper arms. On the next exhalation, keep that core engagement, floating the hands back down to rest in front of the heart space. Turn the hands inside out, Separate the hands, bring them behind. Again, we'll interlock, this time stacking left forefinger to the top. And rather than leaning forward to kind of stop us from um, rolling back, get that sense of engaging the core, drawing the shoulder blades together, then gently draw the arms away from the lower back, keeping the chin in a neutral position. So we're really extending the stretch through the side of the chest, across, the collarbones, then release and bring the hands back to your lower back. Separate the hands. We're going to bring left hand onto the right knee. And then we're going to lift that right hand up, looking up towards the fingertips. As you exhale, reposition that hand behind the hip, follow the ribcage and turn your gaze over the right shoulder. And inhale to realign, lifting and lengthening out the sit bones and exhale to release. As you inhale, lift again out the sit bones, lift that hand up, look up towards the fingertips. Then follow that hand to the opposite knee, repositioning the left hand behind the hip, inhaling to lift and align then turning the gaze over the left shoulder. Shoulder blades drawn together. Exhaling to draw the tummy button in. Inhaling to again follow your gaze to look up to the middle fingers of that left hand. Then as you exhale, release that hand back to the floor. Take the hand from the knee, Extend the right hand a little further away. Lift and lengthen through the left. Draw the shoulder blades together so we're lifted out the sit bones. Bend that uh, right elbow in towards the waist. Keep looking up to the fingertips of the left hand as you come over the midline of the body. So creating a comfortable diagonal from the fingertip through the side of the rib cage down to the hip, then inhaling to lift back to center. Wide through the chest, creating space. Exhaling to gently bring that space over the midline of the body, transferring that release, that opening into the side of the waist and the rib cage. Inhale to lift and come back towards center. Reposition both hands behind the hips, draw the shoulder blades together, core engaged, then follow the sternum as you lift your gaze up towards the ceiling. So it might be that you've just got fingertips grazing the floor. You might have rested into the palms of the hands. The intention here is to use this space to open into the heart center. As you exhale, engage the core. Lift as you inhale to come back to center. Reposition both hands in front of the ankles. 
Another inhale to re-lengthen the spine and exhale to gently walk forward. Positioning the palms in front of the chest, easing the elbows towards the floor. And rather than being in a rush to get to the floor, so what tends to happen is we kind of curve the back because we think we want to get down to the floor. So instead of that action, draw the shoulder blades together and we're gently nudging the elbows a little deeper as we bring the belly to that space between the thighs. So there's more of a diagonal line from the back of the head to the tailbone rather than that curve and letting the head become heavy. As you exhale, draw the tummy button in and gently walk back again towards the ankles. Perfect. Now to give us a rest on the cross-legged position, because we've, most of us have done both sides now, we're going to take the feet wide, coming into that wide leg posture. And we want to activate the toes. So switching the toes on, pointing up towards the ceiling with a little gap behind the knees, lifting up out of the sit bones, and again, it's that sense of drawing the chest forward, but avoiding, if we can, rolling the shoulders forward. So keeping the shoulder blades drawn together, leading from the sternum, bringing the palms to the floor and easing the chest towards the mat. So again, I use that trick of bending the elbows down when I'm not trying to take my jumper off and getting it caught in my bra strap. <laughs> Happens to me every time with this jumper. I should learn. What was that we said earlier about not stripping off for the age of Aquarius, Jane? <laughs> so we're easing a little more deeply into this space. And again, we're keeping the shoulder blades drawn together. And we're just working into this tightness into the inner thighs. We've all got different tolerance in this posture. For most people, it isn't pleasant. It's not an easy posture to get to. If you think about that ball and socket joint at the hip, it's an easier execution than trying to fold the waist, which tends to put tension in the lower back. As you exhale, draw the tummy button in and walk the hands back towards center. Lovely. So as we did earlier, we kind of want that sense of lifting up. So it's like we're lifting the rib cage up off of the belly, keeping the shoulders down away from the ears. And then the same way as we did before, we'll place one hand behind so we open the rib cage towards the back of the room and the other hand to the inside of the thigh. The hand that's behind you, I'm just gonna suggest that we turn the fingers forward. It will make it easier to exhale and just walk the belly towards the thigh. Now at this point, do check that the toe is pointing up towards the ceiling. It keeps the right muscles activated. And particularly if you're tight in the back of the hamstring, allow yourself that little gap under the knee. Every out breath coming a little deeper towards the thigh. It helps if you put on a little extra weight in lockdown like I have, so you can actually feel the belly resting on the thigh. <laughs> I'm not saying that that's technically yogically the way to do it. Then as you exhale, draw the tummy button in, keep the core engaged and gently walk back towards center. Again, there's no rush. We want to lift and align, turn the shoulders back to face the front of the room, take the left hand behind the hip, place the right hand in front of the inner thigh. Then again, we're gonna do that little twist in the rib cage as we start to walk forward on the opposite side. So I'll mention again about keeping those toes pointing up towards the ceiling. When we relax the toes, it goes straight into the hamstring and it's not pleasant. So when the toes are activated, we're in much more control of opening the tightness in the inner thigh. And depending on how deeply you get into the fold, you might even feel the opposite thigh as a kind of a, a counterbalance, if you like. Exhale to draw the tummy button in. Then walk back towards centre, lifting again realigning again and we'll attempt that forward fold once more so this time the forward fold might feel a little bit um, easier in as much as we've worked one leg at a time we've created extra space we're going to take the arms wide either placing them on the shins the ankles 
or if we can reach towards the toes or the soles of the feet. Just avoid, if you can, curving to get into this position. If you feel that you're really reaching, it's probably better to have the hands closer to the knees and visualize making the shoulders heavier so that once more you're kind of folding into this space. Beautiful. If anyone can get their chest to the floor, you're just showing off and this is not the class for you. <laughs> Exhale, draw the tummy button in. Bring the hands underneath the chest and gently walk back to centre. Good, nice. Nice and steady controlled. It never needs to feel um, like too much hard work. Draw the soles of the feet together. When we're in this Adakanasana position, we should be mindful of not putting tension into the fists, into the shoulders. So the shoulders remain relaxed and the hands just rest either at the ankles or the toes. Let gravity release the knees a little wider. Inhale to lift it up out of the sit bones. Then as you exhale, hinge into this space. Now I find this more challenging than the wide leg. I find that my back, there's a point in my back where it kind of stops. So just notice the differences without judgment. It's just the way we're made. Exhaling to widen the knees a little further, engaging the core. Then inhaling to lift back towards centre. Perfect. So we've nicely warmed the inner thighs, getting into a little bit of the back of the thighs. Let's take the legs forward, coming into a dandasana position. I'll come into sideways shape that's easier for you to see. Shoulder blades drawn together. And again, we're switching those toes on. We're active along the back of the legs rather than over recruiting the thighs and making them work too hard. So lift up out of the sit bones, draw the tummy button in, slide that right foot in, and we're going to use the hands either in an interlock or one hand on top of the other to just lift the belly again in towards the thigh. So a nice straight line from the back of the head to the tailbone. Bringing the left hand around the outside of the right knee, positioning the right hand behind the hip, and rather than coming back into that curve shape, remind yourself to lift in the line again, pressing the palm to the floor, then follow the rib cage again rather than the shoulder, coming into a twist on this side. So it might be that the twist is comfortable for you to keep the hand to the outside of the calf. You might have space in the body to bring the elbow over, to lift a little more cleanly out the sit bones, and then it perhaps affords us an extra inch or so in that twist. Then as you exhale, release, bring your gaze forward, extend the right leg and we'll fold the left leg in. So same setup, lift and lengthen, using that little bit of purchase on the shin to draw you closer to the thigh. Starting with the hand wrapped around the outside edge of the calf, Placing the left hand behind the hip and realigning, coming into the first part of the twist, opening the rib cage towards the back of the room. If you choose to bring the elbow to the outside of the knee, recruit a little bit of tension as the knee is pushing out, push the elbow in. So it just intensifies and gives you that little extra space to come a fraction deeper into this twist. Check that that right toe is still pointing up towards the ceiling, it's still active. Then as you exhale, release and bring your gaze forward. Extend both legs forward. And I'm just gonna say for a moment, pause. The twists that we've just done are quite intense. They're almost like flushing all the toxins through the body. So it's not unusual to feel that your ears are a little warmer. You might have noticed that the blood's just flush to your ears there. That's why. It's because the toxins are trying to find the, the quickest route out. Lift up out of the sit bones. Extend both arms forward. Keep that core engagement as you lift the arms up overhead. Shoulders release down away from the ears, wide through the chest. You might become aware of that little bit of tension, a little bit of aggravation in the thighs, jelly beans kicking in, holding you upright. As you exhale, again, draw the tummy button in and widen the arms, turning the palms up towards the ceiling. Then we'll flip the palms forward, 
bringing the fingertips in towards the palms, thumbs up, shoulder blades drawn together. So it's almost like you're clenching the fists with the thumbs up. Ego eradicator pose. Bring your awareness back to the breath. And this can be a very heating posture. So imagine that you're sending every cooling inhalation to the parts of the body that are perhaps feeling a little fatigued. So sending the breath to the thighs, to the core, to that space across the shoulders as you hold the weight of the arms up. Then as you exhale, release the arms down by your side. Lovely. I'm just gonna use the hands to shuffle the bottom forward so that we can lay down with the knees bent and the soles of the feet on the floor. So we spent a lot of time from the, the beginning of this session, very much in an upright position, engaging the core, keeping ourselves really streamlined from the back of the head to the tailbone. Obviously the spine isn't a straight line. So when you reposition the back of the head to the floor, allow that natural lift at the back of the neck, trace that S shape of the spine, allow the natural lift at the base of the spine, Make sure that the heels are hip width apart, there's a little gap between the knees and bring your hands to rest either side of the hips with the palms turned up to the ceiling. So we're allowing the shoulders to relax back and down, widening the space through the chest, exhaling to draw the tummy button in and filling that little gap in the small of the back as we protect those exposed wide muscles in the lower back. Inhale to lift and lengthen through the right leg, pointing and flexing, gently warming the ankle. Pressing through the right heel, drawing the back of the hip to the floor. Then taking a bend in that right knee and resting the ankle to the outside of the left thigh. Slide the arms up to create a T shape. So we're finding all that space at the side of the rib cage, then on and out breath, rolling the right knee to the left side as you turn your gaze along the length of the right arm. So this feels like a twist through the middle of the body. The resistance areas tend to be at the side of the rib cage, into the side of the hip. So work with the breath to weight that right shoulder to the floor. Breathing into that space at the right side of the rib cage, allowing the knee to become a little heavier, to deepen the stretch to the side of the hip, the buttock. But just be mindful that we're not causing tension in the lower back. The belly nice and soft. As you come to the next out breath, draw the tummy button in so we're supporting the lower back and roll the knees back towards centre. Unhook the right foot, lift and lengthen through the left. And again, we'll start pointing and flexing, just gently mobilizing the ankle, finding a little bit of space at the back of the calf, pushing through the heel, drawing the left hip back to the floor. So we're rooting down through the back of the hips, through the back of the shoulders, the core engaged. Now bend that left knee, Part the ankle on the outside of the right thigh. Then bring the left knee to the right side as you turn your gaze over the left arm. Oftentimes when we come to the second side, the shoulder's more inclined to lift because we've released beautifully on the first side. So it might take a little more weight through the shoulder to just find that release in the side of the rib cage. Remembering to let gravity draw the knee closer to the floor to get into the side of the hips. Then as you exhale, draw the tummy button in and roll both knees back towards centre. We'll simply take the left foot off, realign the heels in line with the hips, draw the tummy button in and we'll lift the feet from the floor. So the knees will now line up with the hips, a 90 degree angle at the hips and at the knees, toes pointing up towards the ceiling. 
And what we'd say is if in this position you can feel the lower back lifting, it might serve you to draw the knees a little closer to the chest. It will protect the lower back more. If you feel that you're not working as hard as you wish, you can take the feet a little further away, but try to keep the heels down in the same plane as the knees. So I can't work out who that is in that. Hang on a second, let's just have a look. Sally, your feet are a little bit too high up. So just lower the heels so that they're in the same plane as the knees. That's it, 90 degrees is perfect. So we've got this little gap between the knees. We're not tempted to uh, rest the feet or the knees together. As we lift the arms up now, pressing the fingertips towards the ceiling, but softening the shoulders back towards the mat. So in this posture, it's very static contraction. We can feel that the thighs are working hard because we're keeping the weight of the legs up. So we want to focus our attention into the core. Every out breath, drawing the tummy button in and just fine tuning that core engagement. On the next exhale, keep the knees where they are, but slide the arms back, resting the thumbs an inch from the floor. And if it feels tight through the shoulders, take the arms a little wider. We're keeping the shoulders relaxed away from the ears. By extending the lever, taking the arms back, We've put a little more pressure in the spine. So focus again on that out breath to draw the tummy button in and push the lower back towards the floor. For now, we'll keep both arms overhead as they are. We'll keep the left knee bent as we straighten the right leg and push the right heel down towards the floor, resting an inch from the mat. Wide through the chest, engaged through the core, Use the heel to draw three little circles, starting to mobilize into the hip. Change direction. Then rest that heel again an inch from the floor, really feeling it now in the tummy. On an out breath, hug both knees in. We'll give ourselves a little break as we hug the knees to the chest, gently rocking from one hip to the other and soothing any tension across the sacrum into the lower back. Return to centre. Resume that static contraction position. So the knees are bent. We take the arms up, then back. For now, we're going to keep <clears throat> the opposite knee bent, extend the left leg forward, hovering that heel an inch from the floor. So same shape on the opposite side. You always feel that the buttock of the leg that you're holding up is a bit tighter. We'll use the heel to draw the three wide circles again. So it's really pulling into that lower abdominals. Resting the heel an inch from the floor. Exhaling to draw the tummy button in. It's too soon to go back to a hug, so we'll come back to that neutral Spine position, bringing the uh, hands straight above the shoulders again, shoulders relaxed, drawing the tummy button in, pushing the small of the back to the floor, keeping the left knee bent and pressing the right heel up towards the ceiling. It's almost as though you're holding the ceiling up with the flat of the right foot, inhaling to point, exhaling to flex. Inhaling to point, exhaling to flex. Bringing the right knee back to 90 degree angle as you push through the left heel. Again, pointing and flexing through the ankle. Just finding a little extra space to the back of the calf. Bending that knee again, back to your static contraction. Then on and out breath. Hug the knees in towards the chest. We'll take the hands away from the knees as we widen the arms, T-shape again, palms turned up towards the ceiling. On an out breath, rolling the knees to the right, turning the gaze along the left arm. Again, really surrendering to the weight of the shoulders, releasing to the floor. Exhaling, drawing the tummy button in, 
rolling the knees back through center, then taking that twist to the opposite side, wide through the chest, soft and released into the lower back. And as you exhale, draw the tummy button in and roll the knees back again towards centre. You can either place the hands on the shins or if you prefer, behind the thighs. And we'll just gently roll up into a seated position, then roll back. So we're just going to forward and back a few times. Just almost massaging the tight muscles that run along the length of the spine. Then lifting yourselves back up into a seated position. Perfect. So let's come into an all fours position now. Um, we've done quite a lot of work on the core. And sometimes when we overdo the core, it kind of translates a little into the lower back. So let's bring ourselves into an all fours position with wrists under shoulders, with knees under hips. Elbows soft rather than locked out. Then turn the toes under. Exhale, draw the tummy button in, rolling up through the spine. So we're really focusing on lifting that space in the lower back, nodding the chin to the chest, and just allowing a little release there in the lower back. We're hanging around in this cat stretch because we've done quite a lot of work in the core. So we're just finding our space, then releasing, relaxing, coming onto the tops of the feet, drawing the shoulder blades together, inhaling to lift the sternum forward, mindfully opening through the chest rather than just sinking the belly to the floor. So the still control. Then as you exhale, return back to that neutral spine, all fours position. Extend both hands forward. We'll press the palms into the mat. We're not holding our weight up because we're going to push the sit bones back and come into an extended child's pose. The benefit of pressing the palms to the floor, almost as though they're stuck like glue, is that we'll increase the stretch that we feel through the length of the arms, into the underarms, into the side of the rib cage. And the more that we press the sit bones towards the heels, the more release we'll feel through the length of the spine and across that little vulnerable space in the lower back. Now lower the elbows to the floor. We're going to stack the elbows underneath the shoulders, bring the tips of the thumbs together, walk the feet back and turn the toes under. Thighs parallel to the mat, collarbones wide, shoulder blades drawn together, core engaged in a low plank position. Focus on the breath. When it gets too much, you can lower down. Every inhalation widening and expanding through the chest. Then on an exhale, easing the thighs, the belly, the chest towards the floor. Bring the elbows either side of the chest, the palms either side of the head, shoulder blades drawn together, push down into the forearms, and inhale to lift the chest. Keep drawing the shoulders away from the ears, bringing the shoulder blades together as you turn and look over one shoulder, inhaling to look forward, exhaling to turn and look over the other shoulder, inhaling to look forward, then lowering down, repositioning the hands either side of the chest. So the elbows lift up from the mat, Draw the elbows in towards the rib cage so that we're not flapping our wings. Push down into the palms, press the thighs to the mat and inhale into the cobra pose. So if you can draw the shoulder blades together down away from the ears, extend the stern forward, push into the palms of the hands and release back again into that nice long released stretch. This time, lifting the fingertips from the mat, pressing the wrists to the floor, just changes the emphasis subtly. Then as you replace the palms to the mat, lift back up into an all fours position. We're gonna take the right leg back, turn the toe under, push through the heels. 
Then bring that knee in, taking the opposite foot back, turning the toe under, pushing through the heel. So just getting a little more deeply into that space in the calf. I'm going to teach a modification to the downward facing dog now. So I kind of wanted to give you a little bit extra space in the calf muscle because we'll probably need it. So I'm mindful that when we do the downward facing dog, particularly those of you who have issues with wrists or shoulders, holding the body weight up for any length of time becomes really um, an impossible task, really. I'm also mindful and willing to accept that some of you will be uh, longer in the hamstrings than others. I have not been gifted with that, so I don't know what that feels like. But sometimes when in a down facing dog, you can easily get your heels to the floor and you're looking at me like, is this it? And I'm quietly shaking and dying in the posture. So we're all different. So I'm going to teach you the alternative to downward facing dog, but because for the majority of you, this will be more challenging, I'm going to go through the normal sequence for down dog first. So if you're worried about your wrist being irritated, then do what you can. But the, the next one, if you like, is the one for you. So turn the toes under to begin with. Because I'm obsessed with this tightness that we hold in the calf, I'm going to suggest that the first version we do is to push the body weight so far away from the wrist that we're not holding ourselves up so that when we lift the knees, we can get the heels back to the floor. It will feel as if the majority of your body weight, 70% of your body weight is towards the back of the room. So there's much less pressure on the wrist. It's also a, a nicer angle for the wrist. It's not quite a 90 degree angle. So therefore you've got a little bit more um, release or relief around the wrist joint. You might not all be able to get your heels to the floor. I'm a bit of a hobbit, that's what I do. Lift the tailbone push the sit bones to the back of the room. And this is really extending that stretch in the calves. Now lower down, sit back on the heels. Take a moment in child's pose. We will all have felt that posture differently. It may be that your wrists did feel a little bit of the tension holding your body weight up. So bring them either side of the ankles, let the forehead rest forward and just rotate the wrists, make little circles to release any tension. Now we'll come back up again into the all fours position. So from here, I'm gonna push up into what you would more typically recognize as a downward facing dog. I generally keep my knees bent because I don't find it an easy posture. So I would sort of urge you to say that don't do what you think it's meant to be, do what fits for your body. So turn the toes under, lift up. I'm keeping my knees bent, but the focus for me is to get those shoulders back. My shoulders are still stacked over the wrists. So I'm really pushing away from the wrists so that I'm not holding my upper body weight up. Then I can bend the right knee in and push the left heel to the floor. So you'll notice that every time we step a little higher into the down dog, we're just creating a little more space to the back of the calf, to the back of the thighs. And now we'll test the theory of lowering the heels to the floor, lifting the tailbone and pushing the thighs towards the back of the room. Then when you feel ready, bend the knees, come back down into your child's pose, rest the wrists in the way that feels right for you. So again, if you were holding yourself up, you might want to rotate the wrists or you might want to just stack one hand on top of the other and let the forehead rest. Oftentimes when I'm looking at the screen, I end up my neck gets uncomfortable in that position. So because I'm very clear that I want to very much prepare the hamstrings, I'm going to ask you to come back up into that downward facing dog one more time, just so that I can watch the shape that you make, give you any tips that you might need, because when I'm upside down, I can't see you. Thank you, Veronica, <laughs> adjusting your camera so I can see you and pick on you. So again, I'm gonna suggest that you start in the all fours position. And I have mentioned this a couple of times before, there's a little bit of an Iyengar trick that I picked up years ago, which is if you walk the hands a little further forward to begin with, 
you you start the angle more so you're less inclined to be hovering the shoulders over the wrists it's kinder it's a nicer line so turn the toes under and rather than just lifting up push the sit bones back first so you're pushing away from the wrists then lift up the knees yes so you want to come to an upside down v position Sally, you're a little bit dark where you are, but you actually look as if you're in quite a nice shape to me. I would just say, and Denise, you're the same, the head is a little high. So if you lower the ears down to between the upper arms, it will feel more natural on the back of the neck. And look at the extra length that's just given you, Denise. You've really lengthened the spine. Another good tip is to lift the tailbone. It makes it harder on the back and the legs. Beautiful. Lovely. Gloria, that's a much nicer shape than you were in before. You've almost taken your head too far the other way. So lift your chin a tiny bit so that you, that's it. Perfect. That's nicer between the shoulder blades now. Then when you're ready, take that little rest, come back down, rest on the knees, sit back on the heels. Sue Hinchley, for you, all right? Yeah? Okay, good. Oh, I can't hear you because of the mute. Tell me, okay, good, good. Okay, so you can stay in a restful position now, whether you come up and sit in um, hero pose or whether you're better in a, a cross leg position. And I'll show you the posture that I'm taking you up towards. Um, so the likes of Sally, um, you'll probably find that this is a useful one to have in your arsenal. But what I would suggest is, there's a reason that we don't teach this every day <laughs> and it's because if you tighten the hamstrings it's quite difficult to get to and therefore it's it's not always a favoured posture to do. So the posture in English is called um, dolphin pose, you may have heard it referred to as dolphin pose. I'm quite particular about set up in dolphin pose, I'm particular about everything but again it's an Iyengar thing and it's all about keeping you safe. So when we come into the down dog, I talk about extending the arms forward, but we never have the arms wide. They're always in line with the shoulders. Well, the same thing's gonna happen with dolphin pose. What typically happens is you naturally widen the elbows because it almost feels like you're doing a bit of a press up position. But even if you just pick your elbows up now and feel what that does to your shoulders, it lifts the shoulders up so there's tension and it also folds the collarbones in so there's no strength there. Everything kind of like collapses forward in towards the body. So we would like to keep that nice open line. So therefore, when I come into a dolphin pose, I bring the elbows to the floor and I'll, I'll show you this step by step because if you're upside down, you'll, you'll struggle to see it. And then to make sure that I'm staying at this shoulder width distance, I bring the hands and wrap them around the elbows. So it means that I'm not tempted to slide the elbows out and collapse into those open collarbones. Then I bring the hands forward to create um, a pyramid shape. I prefer to interlock the fingers because it feels nice and strong. And then I bring the top of the head to rest on the floor. So effectively the interlock is protecting the back of the head. Now, at this moment in time, my knees are far too far away from the body. So squeeze the knees in. Remember that I've given you a disclaimer that my hamstrings are tight, so I will not come up into this beautifully. Turn the toes under and lift up. And then if you've got length in the hamstrings, you can start to play around with bringing the heels to the floor. But the key is to keep the chest open, the shoulder blades drawn together, lifting the tailbone towards the ceiling, but feeling really secure there through the shoulders. And it really takes off that tension that we get in the wrists when we're holding ourselves up. So hopefully that was a kind of clear shot. <laughs> Denise's face is a picture. <laughs> Brilliant. So let's have a look at you attempting that. And remember, I've not asked you to come into a headstand, so there's no danger. You're not lifting your feet off the floor. Um, but you might just surprise yourself at how nice and secure it feels around the head, around the neck. 
So you're lowering down rather than starting in all fours, you're lowering down onto the elbows. You're taking a moment to just make sure that the hands can reach around the elbows so that we're not too wide. We're not moving further than shoulder width apart. Then extending the arms forward, coming into a pyramid shape. So bringing the palms together, then interlocking. Now you're gonna bring your head down onto the floor and you're gonna almost place the top of your head, the crown of your head, but push your head as far forward into your hands as you can reach. So you're really grasping the back of your head. And from here on in, you're not allowed to look at the screen because it won't do your neck any good. So trust me and have the head on the floor, the back of the head supported. So the head is inside the hands. Sue Hinchel, if your head looks in front of the hands to me, bring your head back and put it inside the hands. Elbows underneath the shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> no, Sue, I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying. I do, I do, and I don't want you to come up and get it wrong. So now walk the knees in a little bit closer towards the body. Turn the toes under, then lift the bottom up. Great. Aha, lovely. Actually looking quite comfortable. Beautiful. So I think you just got the uh, directions muddled up. I don't think you were doing anything wrong. It was the way I was saying, put your hands here, put your hands there. Fab. Lift the tailbone. So we're really going for it. Press the heels to the floor. I actually really like the shape. I'd say that for most of you, this is, this is an improvement on your down dog which is interesting because it's a harder posture. Then because you're upside down and I'm mindful of that, you'll feel a little bit of pressure on your head. You choose when it feels right to sort of sink back down onto the shins, to ease back down, to sit back towards the heels. And we're going to stay in our child's pose to just relax the forehead onto the backs of the hands. Relaxing the back of the neck. Beautiful. And I hasten to say that obviously you were upside down for a while and it might be the first time some of you have felt that pressure on top of your head. That's what we would do if we were going into a headstand. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. But I'll just ask you to, when you're ready to sit back up, if you want to unmute, you can, because I'm just curious to know how it felt really, if, it, if you could kind of discern a bit of a, a difference. Easier than the, yeah, easier than the downward dog, to my Excellent. amazement. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, that is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it looked impossible. I that as well. Good. I thought it would be for you, Sally, because a few weeks we've been struggling on going, oh, you can't really do the down dog, we'll leave it because it's hard on your wrists. I didn't want to just throw a dolphin in without properly setting you up and talking you through the steps. Um, because as you can tell, it does start to expose the neck. You know, there is a moment where you're resting on the top of your head. So if I don't teach you how to support the head, you could be kind of hanging around there and, and not really doing it right. Gloria, Veronica, you both looked very comfortable in that. Yeah, just felt it, the pressure on my head. Yes. I can't yes. get my feet. I'm just, I'm just close. What was that, Veronica? You, could, you couldn't get your heels I down? I heels down. I've got shoulder length. Oh. Why me? There's not a chance. I can nowhere near get my heels down. Never in a month of Sundays. And I've got to tell you that when I'm in a class, when I can see everyone and I can move around, um, I tend to only suggest dolphin to people who I know are kind of in down dog with their heels down going, what's all this about? Well, the rest of us are going, hurry up, I hate it, I hate it. Because, you know, some people are just so super flexible in the back of the legs that yes. they need a challenge. And dolphin is the challenge. So... Because I was very, I, I genuinely, I'm not just saying this, I genuinely all thought that you looked very competent, very comfortable in that position. And a couple of you have said that in a way it was a bit easier than down dog. Rather than move on from it, I'm kind of going to develop it. I'm going to show you one more thing that we can do in that posture. Um, and I'll feel happier knowing that I've explained to you how to do this properly. So actually you could practice this at home and <laughs> know exactly how to set up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be setting you homework next and asking you to send me pictures. Oh. 
<laughs> I'll give you the next, the next step on from this. And if you imagine, if we were going to be doing a headstand class, this <laughs> is what we would do to what? prepare for a headstand. I'm not going to let you do a headstand at home. <laughs> Where's I'd like that to be there. Where's the wine? Where's the wine? Where's the wine? I'm more like a baby. You need a wine after that. <laughs> You'd need wine with a straw to do it right. There's a bottle. <laughs> so I'll show you again, because obviously when you're upside down, it's really hard to look and turn to the side. I'll show you the shape again. And again, Denise's face was a picture, but it's right. You look at it and you go, there's no way I'm going to get oh, wet. Yeah. And then you do it and you go, oh, actually, and it's great because it's quite impressive. You can show your friends. <laughs> and it's a lot easier. You see my little get. party piece. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do it when you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good idea. Easy. Probably be easier. <laughs> so I'm just, I'll mute you all again, just in the point of view that we don't get any feedback. Yeah. And I'll show you um, what we're going to do now in this. I'm going to call it almost like a three-legged dolphin. Get your head around that, because that doesn't really exist. That's not really a thing. But that, that's how we're going to prepare ourselves to come up into headstand. We won't be doing headstand today, don't worry. I'm just shooting that box down. Okay. So, Sue Hingley, just for clarity then, because I was shouting at you going, move your hands, get them forward, get them back. So when we bring our hands down, they're kind of behind the head, whereas I think I confused you and asked you to move, and, and I think your, your hands ended up here somewhere. So they end up behind the head and the elbows stay in line with the shoulders. So when we come down into that position, again, we're gonna grab the elbows, create that uh, triangle shape, Pop the head in so that we're holding the back of the head so that when we bring the knees in, we kind of feel as though we can't go any further with the head. That's important in a headstand because you don't want to roll over that way. So we'll come up into the dolphin pose. It's the same as the down dog in as much as we want the weight to go back rather than forward. And then we'll simply lift one leg, then come to the floor. We'll lift the other leg, come to the floor. And you don't need an imagination to understand that to get into the headstand, you lift one leg, then the other leg. And before you know it, you're upside down. But let's not do that today. <laughs> I haven't got the first aid ready for that. And if you do want to try a headstand, I would always say do it against a wall. You can do this posture against a wall as well. It's beautiful because it supports the spine as you're lifting up so don't forget that proper setup elbows down palms around the elbows hands come forward and head feeds into that space lovely just keep those elbows directly under the shoulders Walk the knees in first so that you're not trying to make up loads of space when you lift the, the bum up. Then turn the toes under, lift up. Lovely, perfect. And then just whenever you feel you're in the zone, lift one foot and it starts to feel a bit wobbly and it's, you know, you feel it on the head. Then lower that foot down, come to the other. Denise, just walk your feet in a tiny bit closer, please. It just, you won't feel so hanging on your neck as much. That's a bit more achievable. Lovely. You all right, Jane? And then whenever you're ready, lift both feet up, no, I'm only teasing. <laughs> Bend the knees, sit back on the heels and do take a moment in child's pose again because in that position, even more so, because you've lifted one leg up, then the other, you, you'll feel it on the neck now. And I personally think resting the forehead on top of one hand on top of the other, it just, it kind of resets that line at the back of the neck. I think if you bring your head to the floor, you're still kind of curling the head under a little. Then whenever you're ready, 
just make your way back up to a seated position just so that I can see your face that you've not gone green. That's important. Perfect. So now you know dolphin pose, it might be that if you're not enjoying doing downward facing dog in a class, that you kind of switch to that, that that becomes your modification. What I would say is when we're doing the vinyasa flow stuff, so when we're doing things like the salute to the sun, coming in and out of dolphin isn't going to be easy. It's, it's not going to be helpful. But when we're in a more static Iyengar style session, um, holding dolphin for a little bit longer would not, might be a more comfortable place for you to go. Perfect. Give yourselves a round of applause. You've done a really good job today. That's been very, very active. <laughs> Fab. So I'm going to let you come down now to rest in a Shavasana position. Um, if you need to pull on some socks or a blanket, as we've said, it's a bit chilly outside. Socks are always a must. And because we've kind of, you, you, you know, you'll feel that you've worked the neck. You, you know, there's no two ways about it. You've kind of rested your body weight on top of the head. So if you want to use a bit of a cushion to rest, you can. Or if you want to put a cushion underneath your shoulder so that your head rests back, you can. It just might feel a bit extreme. So take a few moments to adjust. To notice that you're going to be distracted by those parts of the body that we've perhaps worked or used today that ordinarily you would keep quiet and switched off. So pay particular attention to that space between the shoulder blades because very often that's in a very relaxed position. So draw the shoulder blades together, create a firm, stable position to rest the weight of your upper body. Tune in to how you're holding the neck. It might be that nodding the chin a little closer to the chest feels a little more comfortable. And play about with either extending the legs and widening the feet or bending the knees to release any tension in the lower back. Just find the position that best supports you, where you don't feel distracted, need to move, need to adjust. And once more, return your awareness to the breath. Slowing the breath down. Following the breath from the tip of the nose along the nasal passages. Exploring the full range of your breath. Typically we breathe in short, shallow breaths, usually only activating the top third of the lungs. So really explore the full expanse of the lungs, widening and expanding into the back of the ribcage, drawing each deeper breath to the base of the lungs, And noticing that as you start to expand and widen fully into this space, that again, you direct the breath to the belly, feeling the belly rise. And as you exhale and release, let the belly fully soften. It's not uncommon to hold on to tension and anxiety in the abdomen. So give yourself permission to unclench here. It's a real worry center. It's often the space where we struggle to make decisions and we have knots in our tummy. So let's set an intention to release 
to relax. To fully soften the belly. And simply notice the natural action of the belly rise on the inhale. Soften and release on the exhale. Now take a moment to scan the body from head to toe. And tune into any parts of the body that may be asking for a little extra attention. Perhaps you have a particular part of the body where stress or tension manifests for you. Perhaps you hold tension in the jaw. Unclench you. Maybe you feel it in the shoulders. Relax the shoulders. Feel the hands become heavy. Allowing every muscle, every joint, every sinew of your body Simply ease a little more deeply into the earth beneath you. As you ease your body into a deeper relaxation. Invite your mind to follow. Enjoy these rare few moments of quiet and calm. Simply resting here and breathing here. Any time the attention wanders, return your focus to the breath. You deserve this time. Tune into your body. Listen to its needs. And mindfully work with the breath to re energize, revitalize. And to rid the body of any toxins, any negative energy. Shanti.
Tune in once more to the breath. Reminding yourself to come to the end of each full breath transaction. Gradually becoming aware again of your space within the room that surrounds you. Feeling the texture of your clothing against your skin. Noticing the temperature of the air against your face, your hands and your feet. Beginning now to slowly, gradually return sensation to the physical body, touching the tip of the thumbs to the tip of each finger. Spreading the fingers, opening the palms, wiggling the fingers, rotating the wrists. Squeezing the shoulders up towards the ears, then releasing once more. Point through the toes, flex through the toes. Wiggle the toes to reawaken the feet, maybe rotating the ankles. Taking your time to draw the feet a little closer together. You may feel you wish to take a long stretch through the body, lifting the arms overhead, pointing through fingers and toes. It may feel more natural to you to hug the knees to the chest and to release any tension in the lower back. In your own time, make your way to the side that feels most comfortable to you, pausing there for a moment to blink the eyes open. Then when you're ready, returning to a comfortable seated position. Oh, there's a few bleedy faces there. <laughs> We've knocked you out today. When you're ready, bring your hands to an Anjali Mudra. Touch to the head for kind thoughts, to the lips for kind words, and to the heart for kind intentions. The light in me honours the light in you. Namaste. So we overran a 